Inside the hidden burial chamber, it's now safe for Ramadan and his team to start removing some of Didi Bastet's many grave goods. I have never seen something like this. This is beautiful. It's treasures. You have to be careful. Among the items being packed up and hoisted to the surface are her canopic jars. Since it was the norm to be buried with four jars, each containing a different organ, Ramadan is intrigued to know why Didi Bastet was buried with six. Everything must be slowly, slowly. So the two extra jars are being taken to Cairo's Egyptian Museum. Under armed escort, So we are on our way now to the museum. The kind of the jars, they're safe in the box. Uh, also with the high security escort that we have right now. Um, very confident everything will go very well today. Yeah, and very excited about it. Oops. Using the museum's CT scanner, Ramadan is hoping to reveal the jar's contents. The real power of this machine is that it gives us an idea about what is actually inside the, the uh, object. Do we expect to find a mummy organ? Can we see a liver? It's an adventure. <laughs> The first jar, depicting the jackal-headed god Duamutef, is placed inside the scanner. This is very interesting. This is such a unique piece. It's followed by the falcon-headed jar. We did the CT scans of the two small comic jars. And the first one is the jackal. What we can see here is the inside it is almost totally filled mm -hmm. with this grayish material. Now we are adjusting the view mm -hmm. and here the material is totally occupying the inside of the jar. Mm -hmm. And this is really a peculiar thing that I, I would say that this is tissue. Uh, so just to double check with you that I understand you correctly, the gray area which is pretty much the majority of the content um, is human tissue, is that true? It could be um, like linen wrappings or so, but that, this doesn't look like a, a wrapping. I don't find the layers of it. I find a lump, mm -hmm. a lump of tissue. And it's the same story with the falcon-headed jar, which also appears to contain human tissue. But what type? We should be thinking about other organs that we traditionally don't see in burials, in the kinobic jars, something like the brain, something like the kidneys. It's possibility, why not? But I'm very happy to know that there's soft tissue inside the two kinobic jars. The discovery that the two small jars could contain extra organs is a fascinating new piece of information. We could have all the organs of Didi Busted been taken out, embalmed, and put inside six kind of jars. There might be the brain of uh, Didi Busted and the kidneys, the two organs that have never been embalmed in ancient Egypt. We've never seen this happening for any person, but that could be the situation with Didi Busted. So why was this done? We're guessing that Didi Busted would have bought an extra package um, where her brain and kidney had been embalmed and placed in two extra cannabis jars. It says something about this business of mummification, this establishment. We're willing to move away from tradition in order to upsell 
perhaps, or cater to the needs of a certain customer. It's not just the discoveries inside Didi Bastet's chamber that are helping to rewrite the book on mummification. Just as revealing are the finds from the rest of the complex. What's interesting to me is that Egyptologists have long had a reasonable understanding of how mummification took place. But what was far less clear was where these processes of the mummification took place. And this is what this site provides us with. We can now very safely talk about the archaeology of mummification, about embalming taking place in an actual, real-life structure right here. But most exciting of all is that the decoding of this unique site and all that it contains has only just begun. Discovering and excavating a site is only the first step in a very long journey. It takes a very long time, sometimes even decades, to truly understand what one site has to tell us.